Hello everyone, it's Jeannie and Joni on Women of Wisdom. Sorry we've been away for a little bit. We were going to do a part two and all kinds of crazy things came our way. Um, we are doing incredibly well right now. We went through some oppression, as a lot of people are. Yeah. And if you're going through oppression, uh, just know you're not alone. Know you're not alone. And now we feel stronger than ever. Uh, something has come over us. And um, today, uh, Joni and I had a little conversation before we started recording, and she suggested that we talk about the underground church. And I am so excited to welcome again Joni Stahl. Joni, welcome, and thank you for that suggestion. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's jump right in. So we are in unprecedented times, um, especially the coastal areas. Uh, look, churches are not able to gather. They're not able to gather. And I think a lot of us have known for a while that, uh, that this time would come. And other countries, as, as we talked about, Joni, um, China and Iraq and Iran and other countries that are m even more oppressed than we are, much more oppressed than we are right now, they are doing what they need to do, and that is form, gather in small groups, local groups, underground churches. And I just, I want to mention something. Um, before we start, before Joni and I got together today, um, the flag behind me kept going out. And my husband says, there's something wrong with, did you touch something? I go, no. So he plugged it back in when we were chatting. It was waving, or not waving, but just, you know, it was right there back on the screen. And it went out again, and I just went, oh, my flag just went out again. And that's so metaphoric for what we're talking about, because what America represents is not what America is going to be. Mm -hmm. And when we lose that flag, we will have to worship together in private, in secret, but never stop worshiping. And worship, and, and that requires us to get together with people in our in our own counties cities communities neighborhoods you know it's time it's time and this is something that we we really have to consider so what are your thoughts on all that Joni? well you know the chinese church the underground church there uh a lot of underground churches like we were speaking about iran you know and that documentary sheep among wolves um how there are it's the fastest growing church in the whole world wow yes uh 55 of it are women um they are potent they are powerful um it's not being reported of course by any kind of mainstream news but uh i love dalton thomas and fai ministries i mean just to say you know watch sheep among wolves volume one and two and uh, you'll see that. that Sorry, is that on YouTube or is yeah, that you, on Vimeo or YouTube? Yeah. Yes, definitely YouTube. It's Sheep Among Wolves, Volumes 1 and 2. Excellent. And it's powerful. It's potent. And it was, it shook me up last year because, you know, we live in a land where we basically, as Christians, we go to church or we don't go to church. You know, there's, we're home worshipers. There's people that worship in the church and, uh, but there are people that do not have church. And so they will have church. And like I said, the Bible opens up is just as fine here at home as it does anywhere else, but they, they left a model for us. And, uh, we are in awe of them because we see, like it says in first, uh, Samuel, it says that the word of God was precious in those days and there was no open vision. Well, the word of God is precious to us in our days, and there is open vision. And we are seeing exactly on an earthly level that this is a great fall of our nation. There, we, we, are, we are in the middle of a civil war, whether people want to realize it or not. Um, we are seeing a complete economic collapse in the fall. There is no end of COVID in sight. Um, we are told we're not allowed to sing in church. Now we sing all we want at home, but there's a lot of people who love their build their their pastor. They love their churches, 
and let's face it, we sing, we're Christians, right? And so when we're told you can't sing, and now next thing you can't go to church, we have to begin thinking ahead. Yes. And, and we have to fight. We have to fight. We yeah. have to have hope. We have to have hope. We have to have a sense of this is not over. This is just beginning. This is where we as warriors come out in our warriorship and depend 100% on the Holy Spirit. This is, where, this is the test. This is it. This is it. And when we, we read the book of Revelation, the seven you know, churches, which are seven church periods, we look at the church of Smyrna, which was the second church, and we see Smyrna, and we know that that is a church of suffering. That was the martyrs era. And we know that the first three centuries were very much the martyrs era. And when we read about the martyrs era, the more that the, the word began to grow, the more Satan kicked up like if he, you know, he found out that he couldn't kill enough people, the more he killed and tortured and killed people, the more <laughs> it fell out for the furtherance of the gospel. But you see, right now, this pressure that we're feeling, don't, don't take it so hard. Allow it to press you. Allow it to press you into what God is doing. He, the word, it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord standeth forever it remains forever now like i was saying to you we're down here in southern california i met michelle we may met we met we just happened to run into each other which was definitely in a divine appointment mm -hmm. but look at we're two down here and i said to her yesterday she said yeah we may be the only two ones it was something like that she had said something like well here we are two of us still in southern california and i said hey lot was the only one in sodom but you see, God had a man in Sodom. He had a man. He has, wherever you are and you're listening, he has you right where you are. And we have to look at the fact that very shortly, we are going to have to find a way to meet. Because like, a bit, okay, I'm going to say this and I'm going to turn it over to you. We just listened to that song by Jess Ray. Mm-hmm beautiful. She said the devil is going to hang from his own gallows. It's already written how it's going to go down. That's right. He already told us what's going to happen. And so we are the last of the last. Now we are warriors and we now have to start looking to God and saying, begin Lord offer ourselves for an underground body of Christ. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Ooh, you know, and, and a lot of people ask me, you know, I'm thinking about moving to Texas, thinking about moving to Minnesota, thinking about moving to Tennessee, thinking about moving to Calif uh, to Idaho, where we let, live. I ask them, I used to say, yeah, you got to get out. You got to get out. Now that was God's message to us. I don't know why. I'm so grateful that we're he where we are. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we could have, I don't think we could have tolerated being there right now, uh, living there, you know, day in and day out in Southern California. But that, that's nor here nor there. We listen to God's direction for us. You have to listen to God's direction. You need to go to prayer and say, Lord, Am I supposed to go or am I supposed to stay? That doesn't mean that he's going to, you know, that you're going to have like a, a real time vision of, of God. And he is going to say, you need to move to Topeka, Kansas. What it means is, is that you will have a burning in your heart to either stay or go. And you will, um, I mean, for us, we were out like we we knew we had to go there was just way too many things that lined up for us um too many visions and dreams since the 90s i've been having dreams and visions so we knew where we that we were to go and then it was a matter of finding where to go and then when we prayed we we received information and then we got confirmation and then when we arrived 
here where we live, we just knew in our hearts, you know, you just have a burning knowing. So I just want to, you know, give everyone, um, I want to just give everyone that sigh of relief that if God isn't pressing you to go, don't let anyone pressure you. Don't let anyone tell you you're stupid because everyone has a purpose where they are or where they're to go. And, you know, like I said, for us, we are to go, but I am so grateful that there are people standing down in New York, standing down in Texas, standing down in Florida, standing down in Southern and Northern California, and are willing to fight the fight, are willing to, to lead um, a small church, a small study, a small prayer group in your neighborhood. It's a matter of finding the, the true believers that are going to endure the remnant body and that's a that's a big that's a that's a big deal. I mean, yeah. we all need that. We need the nourishment. You know, as much as it's important to be home in prayer and and to be um, to be in communion with the Holy Spirit, we still need fellowship. We just do. That's we right. need it because we feed off each other. I mean, even Joni, even doing these shows. I mean, I get so much such a blessing. You know, and I have a group. I mean, we we could talk for all day if we oh, had yeah. the time, you know. And we just feed off. We just get so excited just talking to one another. And we all need um, a you know a friend that is a a similar you know is is a true believer like we are that we can that we're iron sharpens iron and we can discuss things and 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 just uh, confirm and confirm one another's um, solid scriptural standpoint or their experience. Mm -hmm. We need that. We need that fellowship. And uh, man, I mean, one thing that Mike and I, that, that came to us yesterday, and I thank God for this because we have been locked up in a straight jacket mm -hmm. and we have had we've been plugging along, but oh my gosh, you know, there was something in us that was burning and we couldn't break free of, of knowing what that was. And finally it opened up. And so Mike and I are going to announce tomorrow um, that we are going to be doing a, a, a call twice a week and it's going to be interactive because our our mission is to gather people that is our ministry is to gather his people and that was the initiative that is what the holy spirit placed on my husband's heart he trained me to be an event planner all these years well you know we if we can't gather in person we'll gather some way and if we can't gather indoors we'll go outdoors if we can't gather above ground we'll go underground if we can't it's important we are not an island and you know i don't i don't care how strong a believer you are um you know god really loves us to be in fellowship and our prayers are so much more powerful i mean i it's amazing like the the, the uh, i could give you testimony after testimony of things that have happened recently in our prayer group and i know you have a group, Joni, and I know that a lot of people are forming small groups, um, either via um, conference call, Zoom, Skype, or just getting on the phone, you know, in, in, a, in a conference call, like a, a three-way a three call. You don't even have to have a program. And they're praying together intently and seeing amazing miracles occur, amazing results. And I think it's time to get bold. I think it's time to get bold. And I just... I want to say that because of this heavy burden news, um, it is brainwashing. It is oppressing. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have knowledge because we need the knowledge in order to process it. But it's a balance of having the knowledge, but having our eye on heaven, on the Holy Spirit, having our eye on the word of God. And it's almost like, you look at the news or you look at even alternative news because there's a lot of alternative news that's hyping, hyping, hyping certain things. Yeah. And you have to look at 
So if this is happening, Lord, what does your word say? And how does that apply to me? And go back to that and say, I don't care. I don't care. You know, if, I don't care if there's going to be an EMP attack. I don't care if there's, you know, if they're going to try to force vaccinate us. And I say try to force vaccinate us. I don't care if Bill Gates and George Soros and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and, you know, the, the list goes on are scheming and conniving and, you know, doing these horrible things with children and pedophilia and adrenochrome and all this crazy stuff that's so hideous. I don't care. You know why? Because our God created everyone that's doing this. He's in control. He's our powerful savior. He is the light of the world and the truth of his love will set us free and give us power above all. And we are going to see, I have this feeling, Joni, what do you think? I have this feeling that we're going to see miracle after miracle in the next few months and years. You know, I want to say, I'm sorry. I know that, you know, there's, there's a scripture. um, It's in Genesis when Jacob was blessing each one of his children before he died. And when he went to bless Asher, he says, as the day is, so shall thy strength be. You know, the Lord is going to make us equal or more above what is coming to us. See, right now, nothing's happening. We're sitting at our desks. We're talking to each other. But I know that our God, who showed us that he went out of his way to set his people free in Israel, I mean, Egypt, that's our God. (laughs) He's not going to do any less for us than he did for them. Not one iota, not one jot or tittle that has ever been written is going to be less for us than for them. We have now both the New Testament and the Old Testament. We have the mystery revealed. We are, we are sons and daughters of adoption, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. And we have, a, we have our God. We are his sons and daughters. And if there are weak ones among us, God will give us faith for both of us. There's going to be ones he's going to know how to put. Remember in, in Joshua when he said, okay, after they crossed over the Jordan, he said, okay, here's what you're going to do now. You're going to set some over a thousand. And then you're going to set, you're going to set, you know, some one person over a thousand per thousand. Then you're going to set another one over hundreds. And then you're going to set another over 50. And then you're going to set others over 10. See, God is going to put people over other people, not that they would have control of their faith, but that they will feed them like under shepherds. See, God is going to raise up. I fully believe he's going to raise up under shepherds. I fully believe he knows who they are and they are going to be the very not, see, we're not reservoirs. It doesn't say that our, it says our cup runneth over. We're not reservoirs. We're like those two witnesses who have those pipes that are piped into heaven that run the golden oil and cause fire to never cease. See, everything God does is eternal. It has an eternal stream. And that eternal stream started with Abel. And it has been going down ever since. And God is always the one who gets the last word. He is the first and the last. He's beginning and the end. And he is the one that he has done so much work in many of our lives. And if you're watching and you're like, but I'm new to the Lord, then sit back and watch and listen. Because you see, God will make you equal to the thing that's going to come to you. He's not going to leave you high and dry like we were talking. He's not going to drop some ball and say, well, you didn't have the 40 years Joni had. You didn't have the, all those decades Jeannie had. You, you, don't, you, know what I, you know what I'm saying? God is able to take a 16-year-old boy like David, fill him with the power of the Holy Spirit, and launch a stone into the forehead of a giant. And that forehead, that giant was made to bow because he said, you come against me. Remember that giant said to him, he mocked him and said, you come against me. You know, he said, you're coming against me, right? He said, I'm going to take off you. You're going to, you know, I'm going to kill you and feed you to the animals, you know, but listen to what David says. He goes, you come against me with sword and spear, 
but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of the hosts of the armies of Israel. On this day, I will take off your head and I will cast your body to, the, to be eaten of the beasts of the field. And it, he ran to him. Now that was all by the power of the Holy Spirit. While he was a young boy, the youngest of everybody and his big fighting brothers, Eliab and Shaman, all of them, they're out there, men of war. And what was he? He was in the word of God. He, God gave him a heart back then as a child, a man after God's own heart, a boy after God's own heart. It said to the point where, you know what it was? I believe it was the love of God. See, the love of God is a force of power. It's not of an affectionate feeling like, oh, well, I just love you so much. We're talking about a violence, right? Yes. Love is a violent force. Remember what I told you, what Jesus said to me, because I was fighting for my son for a long time and God gave me a victory and it took me a lot. I was on campaign after campaign. The gates of hell were opened up against me and the harder Satan fought against me. And I'm not trying to beat my breast. I'm telling you something right now. It was the hardest thing I had to do. It was horrible. I had to fight. It, it was hideous. And I was alone in the fight. Um, but after all of that, I was thinking one day, not long ago about those, okay, those campaigns back then, Jeannie. And I remember thinking about all those wars I warred, and I heard the Lord say to me in my heart, he said, mothers are the cannons of my army. Because I'll tell you something, the harder you get pressed, the something happens to you. That's <laughs> a source other than yourself where you go, the, you know the, what, fuse yeah. gets lit. the fuse gets lit, you know, it's on. Oh you know? man. But you yeah. see, but, but I'm using that as an example because there's going to have to become an underground church. We yeah. cannot rely on doors being open. Um, you know, uh, on anybody showing, we, we have to rely on wait. God and we can't wait, you know, we can't say, Oh, well, yes. you know, in a few months, everything's going to be back to normal. We'll just, spend you know spend our time watching movies eating popcorn you know no we need to stay in the word intently we need to start seeking fellow um believers we need to do everything in our power to come against these the suppression these laws that are that are wrong this dictatorial shit that's occurring um, we need to pray for our president, yeah. you know, like never before we need to pray for him. And yeah, I just pray that he is convicted that the Holy spirit runneth through him so vastly, so powerfully that he has no choice, but to be just obedient and righteous. And, you know, there's some, you know, I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted at what we're dealing with. But as I, as I, really realize, you know, we all, everyone listening to this call, this, this show, and is part of it and is absorbing what we're saying, you're probably all safe in your home. You have four walls, you have a roof, you have running water, you have food, you have um, someone in your life, a friend, family members that love you, that care for you, that you can care for. Mm -hmm. um, you are comforted in the flesh. So we go outside of our, of our four walls and we start um, using these, you know, letting the media control our vain imaginations. That's right. And that is not okay. I mean, if Satan wants to get you, he's going to get your vain imagination and you're going to start envisioning these horrible outcomes. Well, guess what? God's frequency is much more powerful than the devil's frequency. God's, God's uh, power can obliterate any plans of the enemy. And we have to be hopeful and faithful, but he expects us to operate in his army through, allow the Holy Spirit to completely encompass us, to direct us, and to be faithful and to be trusting. Like we talked about the difference between faith and trust. Faith is a concept and we are to be faithful. And, and I'm not minimizing faith by any means. 
but trusting means you trust someone with not only with your life, but you trust him with your eternity, with your death on this earth and your eternal life, which is all that matters, all that matters. You know, I think God is, I think, you know, I think that if, if someone, you know, if we don't like the taste of something, we're not going to eat it. And I think that God is really giving us a sour taste in our mouth for, for the, the beast system on this earth so that we will be so compelled to get away from it and to draw nearer to him that he is just giving us the easiest way. And if we refuse that, we're really, we're really foolish. You know, I mean, he's making it so easy for us to draw near to him. And I noticed something, you know, it says draw near, uh, you know, James 4, 8, it says draw near to God. He'll draw near to you, resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Now, obviously when we draw near to God, we draw near to that potent light mm-hmm. that Satan cannot dwell in. So there's a protective uh, covering that we have in that. Yes. And I've noticed about him that he's pretty instant. You know, there's a, I hear testimonies constantly. People write to me all the time. They're like, you know, I've been so kind of lackadaisical and coming, you know, in prayer and I just got kind of lazy and things like that. And then I started to notice I was getting op- oppressed or things like that. And then I realized I really needed to get back to the Lord. And I found out that as soon as I returned to him and just spent time in his word, he was, he was present. Yes. And I thought, isn't that beautiful? Like he runs to us. Like, it's not like, please God, where are you? Come back. Um, some people will say that they'll say, but he still hasn't. But listen, we, it's, Faith and trust, right? Faith is really a concept. But, you know, I look at faith as faith is a decision based on fact. You decide, do you have faith on what I just, what he just said? Do you have faith that he said he, see, it's one thing. Do you have faith in God? Yes. But do you have faith that he will? Mm-hmm. It's a future concept. It's a different, it's a concept. Okay. Yes. But when you trust God, that means you go, because see, there's going to be different testing and we do have to be tested and it's good for us yeah. because we want to get rid of the stuff that stands in the way of us and him where yeah. we go, no, Lord, I trust you. Well, we can trust him when there's some few bucks in our bank and fridge, you know, food has, there's food in the fridge and there's gas in the tank and we're all healthy, that kind of thing. But what happens when you get the sledgehammer behind the knees? Okay. See, God will see you through that. He purchased you with his son's only blood. Yes, he did. Your life is not yours. Mm-mm. Your soul and your body are not your own. You've been purchased. So he made a purchase and there are no returns. There is no return desk. No refunds. <laughs> and no refunds. He takes it seriously. But we have to let him be God. Mm. we have to let him be God because a lot of people go, well, I gave God, I came and after a week, nothing happened. It's you got to let him do, you got to answer. You got to let him answer his way in his own. He'll do it in his own style, but you have to be conversant with him. Like those shepherds with David's men that belong to Nabal. You could read that in first Samuel chapter 25, in case you are interested, read the whole story, but how the shepherds, were protected by David's men while they were out at war. And the shepherds told Nabal, we were safe the entire time that we were out there with the sheep because as long as we were conversant with David's men, they protected us. So there was an intercourse of talking and life with them and sharing. And so a relationship was built up between David's men and the shepherds. And what a beautiful story that we're his sheep, right? Because Jesus says, what does he say in John 10? He says, I am the shepherd of the sheep and my sheep know me because they know my voice Mm -hmm. and the voice of another, they won't follow. You know, he says, I call them all by name and they follow me, right? He says, because I call them by name. And so he knows us. Even Moses said that. He said in, in chapter 33 of um, uh, 
no, it was chapter 30 of Deuteronomy and Exodus. And he said, you know, these are your people, you know, you want me to go out with them. And he said, if you have known me by name, if you have grace upon me and have known me by name, he said, please send one to go with me. And God answers and says to him, I do have grace for you. And I have known you by name. Mm -hmm. And my presence will go with you. And then he gives him something added that he didn't ask for. He said, and I'll give you peace. And at the end of that, he said, show me your glory. And he said, the Lord had him stand on the cleft of the rock beside him and covered him with his hand. And he went by and he saw his back parts. And he said, he, I, he said, I cause all my goodness to pass before you. And isn't that interesting how he said, show me your glory. He said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. So there's goodness that's part of his glory. So when we say to the Lord, Lord, show me your glory. He's going to show it to you that there's components of his glory. And if he really knows you by name, that means here's grace for you and his presence will go with you mm -hmm. and he will cause all of his goodness to go before you. And, you know, sometimes we pray, let me just make sure my phone's turned off. Um, sometimes we pray for, for things that aren't good for us, even if we think they are. In other words, God's got the big plan. He's got, he sees the entire picture and we see this little telescope of of a flash and you know i've i've had so many people um you know that i that that call me and say look i don't know what to do i'm asking god you know to answer me i'm i'm praying for this i'm praying for that and i said pray for his will and pray for him to reveal his will so that when he manifests it you will know that he has answered your prayer you know, we're not going to get the painted pony that we pray for. <laughs> we're going to get something much bigger and better and more important and um, useful. And also God's got his timing. You know, um, you know, I, I, I think it's amazing how, um, you know, how when Lot was in Sodom and, and um, you know, he the, the petition to petitioning God saying, you know, can you wait? Can you wait? You know, what if there's, what if there's 50 men there and God waited and waited and waited and, you know, God. And I, I kind of laugh about it because I'm thinking, did he really wait or was he just bonding with the, you know, was he bonding and, and did he have, you know, he knows the beginning from the end he knows the end of the of the story. He knows the end of the route. Um, but he kind of lets us do, you know, kind of go off the side path. Well, you, know? you know, it says, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 8, he says, for the father knows what you have need of before you ask. That's right. And he knows so, better than we do, right? But the whole focus is on come to me. Yes. You know, he's more willing to dwell with us than we are with him. I made little notes oh, of it last week, you know. Big time. Big you know, time. He wants to be with us more than we want to be with him. And, you know, we got to give him room to be God. You know, he's not like us. He took on the form of a man. You know, he took on the form of flesh to condemn sin in the flesh, right? And that he broke that curse forever. Yes. So, But we have to remember that it says that he's unsearchable and he's past finding out, right? Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him or who has been his counselor, right? And who can know his mind, he's unsearchable. And though we go into heaven, it talks about in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, when Paul the apostle says, um, for we know, for we, prof we prophesy in part, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but then that when that which is perfect is come, um, then shall we see face to face and we shall know all things as we are fully known. Yet I say, yet you will never fully know the Lord. 
he cannot be fully known. He must be God. He must be unsearchable. It says he is unsearchable. That means it's a standing thing. He is unsearchable. And from eternity to eternity in the age of ages into all eternity, he's going to be where he's going to, he's going to ever be unsearchable because he is the almighty one. He is almighty God. How wonderful is that? That we're always going to be finding out marvelous things about our God that he's going to show us things, mysteries hidden from the foundations of the world, beautiful things, yes. amazing things. I mean, it's beyond what we can understand. So our concept of Christ is, yes, he is our savior. Yes, he died for us. Yes, it says he has passed through the heavens that he may, you know, sit. he is the high priest who has passed through the heavens that he may fill all things, right? But we have to look at him and we have to, it says, it says uh, wisdom and stability. It says this in Isaiah 33, 6. It says wisdom and, and uh, stabil wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Do you realize that is the only hmm. place in the whole Bible, the whole word, the whole writ of canon that it says the fear of the Lord is his treasure? Now, it talks about the treasures of the Lord, hmm. but he calls it his treasure. Because you see, when you fear the Lord, that means you've had a revelation of him. You know, I call it a peak over might. You see his power and might, and you see that nothing can overcome him. Well, look what happened to Isaiah. Yeah. I saw the Lord, right? He said he saw the Lord seated upon the throne high and lifted up. Remember? And then remember even... Peter, you know, after Jesus used his boat to preach from, you know, from the shore, from the sea, he said, throw your net over and they caught all that fish. And then he beckoned to the other ones to catch the fish and the nets broke. But there was a moment the Holy Spirit brought that revelation to Peter when he fell down upon his knees and said, depart from me. For I am a wicked man. I'm a sinful man. Yeah. Think about that revelation that you would say, don't even, I'm hideous. You know what I mean? Whoever says to Christ, depart from me. See, he was in the presence. In that moment, he had a revelation and we are called by Paul the apostle. He tells us in Ephesians 1, 16 and 7, that the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, pray, he said, that the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Notice not your calling, right. the hope of his calling and the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints. But it begins with the revelation. Yes. Notice it went down from there that the Holy Spirit has to reveal Christ to you, but he has to do it all the time to you through your life. And when you get that revelation, you're going to do even what Thomas did when he said, when he fell down and he saw the print of, you know, in his fingers and the, the you know, he wanted to thrust his hand into his side. And Jesus said, here I am flesh and blood, uh, uh, flesh, a uh, body, my body, you know, he said, touch me and see. He said, um, you know, he's, you know, he said flesh and bones is not, you know, he didn't have blood anymore. Right. He says, but it said something happened in that moment. When he fell down, it said he fell down and said, my Lord and my God. That he wasn't like my Lord and my God. There was something of revelation that he saw that makes you bow your knee and you fall down. Yeah. And Dave and John even said that when he saw him in his glory in Revelation 1. After he saw him in his glory, he said, and I, John, fell down as though dead. Yes. Yes. And when you have that revelation of him, the fear of the Lord, that is his treasure, becomes your treasure. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, Joni, you inspire me so much. I hope you <laughs> inspire everybody, everybody listening to this broadcast because, you know, we have to get better at not only memorizing scripture, recollection of scripture, but the deeper meanings of scripture. And 
Boy, um, I, I get so inspired by you, you know, and I, I, I'm going to have to like start doing flashcards or something. <laughs> I mean, I can't even, I can't even imagine how many years you've been doing this. And I am just so grateful that the Holy Spirit placed it on your heart to, to start really getting deep in scripture and devoting yourself morning after morning. And you are a living example. I'm not trying to I know. Pedestal, girlfriend. I'm not trying to elevate you. I'm just saying thank you for being a living, breathing example of what God is so pleased with, wants us to understand his word and understand the deeper meaning and to love it and to love it. I mean, my husband and I, Mike, we're, we're starting to sit down, make a point every day of reading the scripture. I'm doing studies. We're going to our church Bible study but we are not prepared to, to, to quote scripture, you know, like, like just naturally as though it's a foreign language that we are adept at, you know, we, we are not there. And, and I'll tell you what, as times move forward and things get more unique, I'll just say that it's imperative that we, that we find the scripture and the hidden, the, the deep meanings that, that impact our lives and that we, we indwell in those words. And thank you so much for just being able to do what you do. And I just, I love you so much. And I know, I know the listeners love you so much and just love what you're doing. And uh, I just, you know, it's very convicting to me, and I hope it is to, to the other people watching this, that, you know, how can you touch someone's heart and everyone's at a different level? I mean, it can be a simple little seed that you drop that can change someone's life, or it can be something very deep that can take someone to the next level. And so let's, let's all get into, the, get into his word more. Um, that's something that we plan to encourage when we do these calls that are coming up that we'll be announcing shortly this week. And I just love you. I can't wait to, uh, for us to do another show, Joni. Um, I just thank you so much. Um, my heart, our heart is so with California right now. And it's so great to have boots on the ground, just warriors in Christ that are, not going to stand that are going to expose and that are going to um, endure with joy, with joy, you know, um, you work around these, these things and yet you, and you confront these things and you spread the word th that the, of what is righteous and what is not. And that will give us more time you know, for a harvest, for a more plentiful harvest. And I think that's really why um, God is exposing these things so outright. You know, it's like, remember Nazi Germany when uh, the, 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 when they just sang a little louder as the, as the trains went by and the people were in shackles screaming and crying. And it's like, you know, sing a little louder in church because we can't do anything about that or we don't dare do anything about that. That is the wrong attitude to have. And I am so sorry for what happened in Germany. But what a blessing. What a blessing and responsibility we have because we've been given a blueprint that we can't be that way. And God expects more of us. You know, I heard a saint, an old saint say this, who's now gone to be with the Lord probably for 100 years. And it's just a little brief saying. And the saint said, he said, how you treat others is how you treat Christ. Yes. And another thing, Samuel Rutherford, because I studied Puritan works forever, like I still do. I love Puritan writing. Samuel Rutherford is one of my favorite ones. And he spent time in prison getting arrested. You know, he was a beautiful Puritan uh, pastor. And he said this, and I never forgot it. He said, um, in one of his books, he said, Whenever I am sent to the king's dungeon, I seek for the king's wine. Say that again. Whenever I'm sent to the king's dungeon, 
I seek for the king's wine, the wine cellar. You know, see, he'll give you treasures in darkness. <laughs> There's treasures in darkness. Why did, why did it take me so long to get that one? That is really, yeah. You're when oh, that's good. It's good because we can find good in every circumstance. Look, I'll tell you something. The best thing I could ever tell people to do, um, read the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Read, um, you know, get into some church history. I don't mean get into like Irenaeus and Bede and, you know, Clement, all those. I'm talking about read stories, read testimonies, read things about how they did it. Read how they did it. What did they do? Because if it's going, if the Lord is going to allow everything to get tougher, then we have to be people that are equal to that and not whine and cry and go, what we want to do this. It's like, who's stopping you from singing? That's right. And you know, stopping you from reading the word you, you can, if they can do it and they did it and they're in glory today and they didn't have a, a thumbnail of what we had. No. And you know, to, to what, to, to whom much is given much is expected. So we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to stand up. We have a responsibility to get information out, to pray for other people, to pray for our enemies. I mean, we have a responsibility to pray for these evil people that are still salvageable. You know, I believe a lot of them are still salvageable. I believe- well, I say this, as long as they're still breathing, pray for them. Don't bury them beforehand. If That's they right. are still walking on the earth, pray for them. Don't decide on the behalf of the Lord that they're too far gone. That, that Look at, we have story after story. I just read about Nebuchadnezzar. We yeah. know that that was a wicked man. And yeah. he was given a year to repent. And after a year, he was like, hey, look at this. Is not this great Babylon that I have builded by my great power and by my great might? You know, and it said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, remember the watchers? Yeah. While thy word is still in thy mouth, behold, thou art taken from your throne. You're going out into the palace yard for seven until seven times pass over you. And at the end, it said, and I, Nebuchadnezzar, a moment came where I lifted up mine eyes and my reasoning returned to me and I blessed and extolled the most high God. He said, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. And he went further to say, and it says, and at that time I was restored to my throne and excellent majesty was added unto me. And now I Nebuchadnezzar to make a decree this day Whoever shall speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let his house become dung and let, you know, I mean, a curse was placed upon them. So mm. if he can take a man like that, mm. do not bury any beforehand. No. I mean, people will go, well, I don't, I don't want to pray for George Soros. What if God said one person that would have taken one man to say, God, he is a wicked man. He is a man more wicked than we can ever know. But I pray this, that your love knows no bounds. Your love is limitless. Yes. And some people might go, well, I want to spit Joan. I'm going to shut this video off. That's a wicked <laughs> man. Well, you know what? I heard somebody say this. Um, and it was a, the a theologian who said this. He said, I don't remember who it was. But he said, somebody came to him and said, why did God choose Judas? Knowing he was going to you know, do what he did. And he said, well, the greater question is, why did he choose me? <laughs> it's true it's true so we have to you know what we we have to stand on this on god's side and say it's not up to us but if they're still walking and they're still breathing then you we better realize that god is not willing he's not willing that any man perish but that all come into the knowledge of the truth and be saved well in the way i look at it i look at it like Okay, so if we, if we, uh, let's say, I'm not going to name names, but let's just say someone that we know is incarnate evil and wicked to the core and doing horrible crimes against humanity, and they are executed. Well, guess what? The demon that ran them is now going to go into someone 
even right. younger and more capable that we don't know of, it's better to, to hold that person hostage, render them powerless, whether it be in prison or by whatever means, and keep that demon contained where we know where they are, you know what I mean? And because demons don't die, at least not, on, not in this. Well, they, once the shell is dead, they want a body to inhabit. They inhabit. They They'll just re inhabit real. something else or some object, some inanimate object, some person, some. So to me, it's like at least we know what we're dealing with. And in the meantime, there's a chance of, you know, just like Nebuchadnezzar, we never know. We never know. And yeah, we, we got to leave it up to the Lord. I mean, it's like yeah, there's. Vengeance is like, his. Vengeance is his. his. And Lord. listen, I would rather. I would rather, even if I prayed once, and I'll just say this really quick because I know it's time for us to go. Um, <clears throat> I saw this man. He went into prison, okay? Mm. And he had murdered. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even remember what the story was, but it was an egregious murder. And I just looked at that man, and I can just tell all eyes of the whole world were on him that would like to see him dead. Probably rightly so after what I remember it was so egregious. I was like... <sighs> I was like, how does, well, we know how it does it, you know, demons enter into these people and, and manifest through them to do it. Um, but I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for him. I'm not trying to make myself anything vitriolic. I'm just saying, I said, you know what? Maybe not one person, maybe someone else besides me can say, Jesus didn't create him for that. No. He was someone's baby once. And whatever happened that opened a door mm. to demonic infestation that got right. deeper and deeper because demons need a body to perpetrate those sin, the, what they are. If it's a spirit of murder, they need a body to murder. And they may have been, you know, I mean, scientifically, um, some of these people are, are completely ruined as, as babies. I mean, are are raped and it's like something happens to them where they're so traumatized where their personality is split and they are in prison starting at a very young age and so they don't have the freedom that you and I have they don't yeah. you know they they even though they may have all the riches and all the fame they're still they don't have they are not free you know one thing one thing we got to let the lord be lord about is there's some gray areas with things that's none of our business. And if a person, one thing I know about the Lord, if, if you were born in a situation where you were a SRA victim from the birth mm -hmm. um, and you were going into split multiple personalities, DID, you know, yeah. dissociative of identity disorders and all of those things, because those are coping mechanisms. Yeah. One personality takes over another to cope. Yeah. And so, um, we know also, too, that spirits come in and they manifest different personality uh, uh, types. But we have a merciful God. And when that person comes to die at whatever age, and they say they're an adult, um, we have a merciful God. You know, some people say, well, I think that you need to get saved. If they are not capable because they are so destroyed psychologically, then that becomes his, that's his business. My hands are off of that. Exactly. I don't want anything to do with it. Whatever they, whatever happens to them between earth and the eternal, it's his. That's right. Off That's the plate, you off know, the table. And we know that about God. So, but in, in, in closing, I just, I want to encourage people, do not get dismayed at all the garbage that you're reading, even in alternative media. Yes, we, you know, the DHS is doing this, and yes, FEMA is doing this, and yes, um, you know, Big Farm is doing this, and yes, the globalists are doing this. Guess what? We have an all-powerful God that is mighty and strong. He expects us to rise up. He expects us to pray. He expects, expects us to not only have faith that he will prevail, but trust in him in all we do. And we, and for that, we, we, we must be filled with joy. We, we got to be filled with joy. We got to say, whoa, I'm on the right side of history, of his story, history. Well, well, 
That's we're right. On the right side. You know, yeah. what a glorious God we have that created us, that gave us this opportunity. And, and, and a patient God that is put up with all our suffering. Yes. Yes. Everything, everything. I just, I can't wait to meet again. I can't wait to, um, you know, I, I just can't wait until we do what we're, we're, what we're headed to do. Um, I can't wait to hear more Joni about what you're, up to and we just have to we just have to stay excited i mean stay excited it's not something you can manufacture but god wants your heart to be open he wants you to be excited filled with joy and we are not unstoppable in our flesh but unstoppable in his glory in his spirit we are unstoppable so fear not and frankly, you know, we can't, we also have to pray for our family members that aren't saved, but we, but we need to know that God has them and we do what we can. And then we give it up to God and just pray, 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 because that's that trust thing you talked about where you have to just trust him and say, I trust you. How could I not trust the one, the God of love? God is love. And he loves those that are re Christ rejectors. They don't want you. Don't talk to me. La, 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 la. You know how they do that, you know? Yep. And we say, okay, we won't talk about him anymore, but we'll let the Holy Spirit do the talking then, which is better by far. Amen. So we keep praying in the shadow, right? As we dwell in the secret place to the most high and let God do the work. Let him, him do, turn it over. He wants them in his kingdom more than we do. He died for them as much as he died for us. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, well, and the bottom line is, you know, we, we want to be in control, <laughs> but we never were in control. You know, That's it's right. It's always an illusion. And the globalists that think they're in control, the, the demonic realm that think they're in control, they have pulled some strings and God is only, they're only in control as much as God has allowed it. So just remember that that God is in control. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows, he knows exactly what we're supposed to do. We need to tune in to his role. We need to clearly understand our role in all this. And we need to pray without, without ceasing, get into his word, know his word, and let it indwell into our, our being, our conscious, and stay away from the garbage. It's okay to know about it, from it. But, don't, but don't dwell on it. We don't have to watch the same stuff over and over again and, and then get all mad. You know, I mean, I used to do that. I used to like throw things at the television. <laughs> I mean, not like to break the TV, yeah, yeah. but I used to get really mad at the TV. And then I realized this is stupid. There's an on and off switch. <laughs> all I have to do is push it off. <laughs> 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 I can't believe what he just said. And I'm like, wait a minute. He's like an image on this, you know. It's a transmission. It's a transmission. And I, <laughs> they know exactly how they're impacting us. They've been studying the, you know, the human condition. And Satan has been studying humanity for God only know, knows how long. I mean, you know what I just thought, you know, I just thought right now. But <clears throat> You know, when Jesus said to, uh, I know we got to go, but I'm going to say it's really fast. Okay. Because put things into context, okay? When Jesus said to, to uh, about Satan, this is his hour and his power, right? Remember when, Saul, remember when Judas went out and it was night and, you know, he went out and then Jesus wound up in the garden and then they came and arrested him. So there was like this period of time between the last supper and when he hung on the cross right so this period of time that was satan's hour and power so he had an hour and that was his power this seven year period of tribulation spoken about being a seven year period he only gets seven years and then at the end of the thousand years he's loosed for a little season whatever that means you know whatever that means if it's a year ten years a thousand years i have no idea whatever that little season is but then he's done Yes. Revelation 2010. And Satan was cast into the lake of fire to be tormented day and night forever and ever. 
okay? We go on into eternity, That's okay? Right. We right. go on forever and ever That's in right. glory. So we know how it ends. We know how it ends. And being that we know how it ends, we have this that tells us how God feels, what he thinks, what to do, how to pray, how to operate. Like you said, let the word of God, God dwell richly in our hearts. Yes. Let the word, let the peace of God rule in our hearts, all those kind of things. And you would be surprised a little bit really does go a long way. It doesn't have to be heavy. No. Book knowledge. It's just one line. Out of the heart. Have you ever just opened the Bible just randomly because you're yeah. just, you're hungry. And then whatever you read, it's like exactly what you needed to read. Yes, and, totally. And you're just like, wow. I can't even believe I'm reading this one sentence. It's just absolutely what I needed to hear and what I needed to see and what I needed to absorb. So with that said, um, we can't wait to get to see you all again um, for sure next week, if not sooner. And thank you very much, Joni, for uh, again, being with us. I, I, we can't wait to see you in California. Um, that's in November, um, right after the election, God willing. Uh, we will make a way, we will figure out how to work that. So please don't hesitate to go ahead and register. Um, you will not be disappointed, whatever we do. And um, we will be definitely cognizant of everyone's uh, financial situation if for whatever reason um, we cannot do it. And, I, and I, I actually rebuke that in the name of Jesus because I know that we are supposed to be there. And uh, we, for now, are just, we're just trudging ahead and we're going to go out there and have an amazing, amazing, amazing time together. So in the meantime, <laughs> be blessed. Don't forget that God is in control. He loves you. Be filled with joy. I think of Henry Groover, Joyful Sound Ministry. He always got that, that we should be filled with joy in our hearts because he is with us. And just purify your heart, purify your mind. Um, do what you can to be obedient and ask the Holy Spirit to take away all desire for anything that's not of him. And I just pray for all of you in Jesus' name that you that you have a blessed week, that you are wise and strong enough to resist the enemy, and that uh, you are delighted with what God is doing right now in all of us and for all of us. Amen. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.